ideologically coherent. I just don't know what the like. I don't know what the spin is on. Yes, this is a good thing. Like, look at this. Let's 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 watch this a little bit, okay? Let me turn let me turn this down. That's gone. All right. So this is this is Tucker Carlson's take on uh, the Russian uh, attack on, on Ukraine. This is Tucker Carlson. This is today. And by the way, this is the reason I saw this was because it was tweeted by Benny Johnson, who's a fucking uh, loser. You can see it was retweeted by Jesse Lee Peterson. Uh, he follows me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, anyway, this is this is this is Tucker Carlson. Like, just gross. Putting in Ukraine, whatever its scale, and it's not like this is the only way we're gonna. I, we have to understand what the fuck they think. I don't. I actually don't know the benefits of this, if you, regardless of, of your political persuasion as an American. Like, I don't know what you like about this. Totally clear right now, but whatever it is, it's a tragedy because war always is a tragedy, and the closer you get to it, the more horrifying it seems. It's the ugliest thing that men do, ever. Vladimir Putin started this war, so whatever the context of the decision that he made, he did it. He fired the first shots. Okay. He is to blame for what we're seeing tonight in Ukraine. So he's blaming, so wait, he's anti-Russia? The question is, once we've established that. Because he was pro-Russia yesterday. And it's obvious. How should the United States respond to what he has done? So within minutes of the outbreak of the war last night, the usual liars on television began leveraging this tragedy for partisan political gain. If you ever watch the know. aftermath of a school shooting, you're familiar with how they behave. It's contemptible. But we're going to ignore it tonight because there is too much else going on that actually matters. And the main thing that matters in any crisis is deciding what's most important, creating a hierarchy of concern. Okay. So People, until people's last night, lives. Please say people's lives. The main purpose of our foreign policy was to prevent Russia Ukrainian from invading lives. Ukraine. Obviously, no. that failed. At some point, we should figure out why. But what's our top goal now? Is well, there's several. Be, is this going to be Biden sucks because he didn't prevent this? All of them. Here are the first three. First and most obviously, avoid a full-scale war with a nuclear-armed adversary. <laughs> From the American perspective, of course. <laughs> what what does America have to do? Like, what the fuck? Why are we? That's the number one concern for human beings. As this happens, we should be worried about America getting into a full-scale war with Russia. I think. And to be fair, very few people in Washington want anything like that. War with Russia is so obviously a bad idea. But that doesn't mean we won't have one. Wars often break out accidentally, or more often, incrementally. Things escalate, and the next thing you know, you've got Verdun, with many thousands dead. Now that shooting has started in Ukraine, it is entirely possible, no matter what they assure you, that Americans could wind up getting hurt in Eastern Europe. We should prevent that, but preventing it will require wisdom and farsightedness and emotional control. <laughs> From the reactionary right, this is very rich. That is an incredibly rich thing to say. For t If you're Tucker Carlson and your entire brand is based on knee-jerk racist reaction from a right-wing perspective, <laughs> uh, I hate him hate him dude he's such a fucking slug boy all of which are never in abundant supply in washington and especially now that everyone is justifiably upset again what russia has done is awful Oof. but we could still make it worse mark warner the head of the senate intelligence committee just announced that russia could be i agree that american hegemony could make this worse a potential but, but yeah. <laughs> i believe tucker's Tucker's reaction to this is not is not no 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 no. In the in the interest of American hegemony, we we should attack, of course, right? Really close to triggering what's known as Article Five of the NATO alliance. That's a collective defense principle. So if Russia were to launch a cyber attack on Ukraine, Warner explained, an attack that affects nearby NATO members like Poland or Lithuania, mm -hmm. then possibly every NATO country, including ours, the United States would be obligated to declare war on Russia. For a Period. cyber attack? Uh, we'd be obligated to declare war on Russia if Russia invaded NATO 
countries, which are the country... Okay. <laughs> if we look at it, and we should... Ukraine. Uh, all these are fucking NATO countries. Like, literally all of them. <laughs> like, all that, all that border Ukraine. Uh, Russia's big issue was they were like, oh, Ukraine's a security threat because they may enter NATO. Meanwhile, if say say they annex the entirety of Ukraine, right? What do you they're, now? They're more now. They're even more bordering it, quite literally more bordered. <laughs> I don't have to tell you. Like w what Russia really wants here, I believe, uh, would be the only thing is is more Black Sea access, obviously, because uh, you know Ukraine's here. Um, so for shipping and stuff, but like you have to, there's no way that NATO or the allies are going to allow you like this, th like this to be achieved violently. And then for you to remain like, like, oh yeah, go ahead and trade just fine. Everyone's no normal. Like, no, this will be blockaded and you'll be embargoed and, and you'll just be sent into the fucking sea, dude. It doesn't make any sense. It's just the dumbest it's just a despot, man. It doesn't make any sense. Unless every single person that has ever written about war <laughs> and, like, how to do it was wrong and these guys are on the cutting edge, I just don't think it's going to work out. Yeah, we got to watch that in a little bit. I'll definitely watch this this video. Uh, notorious. He's explaining. One of the things that I'm gravely concerned about is if Russia unleashes its full cyber power against Ukraine, once you put malware into the wild, in a sense, uh, it knows no geographic boundaries. So if the Russians decide they're going to try to turn off the power, uh, turn off all the electricity all across Ukraine, very likely that may turn off the power in eastern Poland and eastern Romania. That could affect our troops if suddenly hospitals are shut down, if uh, those NATO... By the way, Russians were sh firing into a uh, uh, radiation clinic today. Um right next to a hospital in Ukraine today, in like earlier. No troops, American troops, somehow have a, a car accident because the, the stoplights don't work. Um, we are suddenly in an area, of, hypothetically, um, an Article 5, where one NATO country is attacked. We all have to come to each other's aid. So Warner is certainly right. That could add, that hypothetical that he outlined could happen in the cyber attack on Ukraine could well affect the infrastructure of dude this is what people that watch fox news all day like this is what they're fed man this is <laughs> they they they're drumming up fear Ugh. of their eastern european countries that would be bad it would be a crime the civilized world yeah, power's would going deplore out too, it but article 5 is not a mechanical mechanism human beings have to decide to invoke it and the question is, is what the senator just described something that is worth risking a nuclear conflict over? And that is something we should pause very deeply to think about in the most sober possible way. And we hope that our leaders are. But not all of them seem sober right now. Some of them seem reckless and, as usual, ignorant. Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, for example, spends a lot of time on cable television talking about world affairs. He seems like an expert. And yet, by temperament, he's certainly the last person you want anywhere near a nuclear button. Today, Kinziger informed us that Russia's seizure of the defunct Chernobyl plant mm -hmm. might, quote, trigger Article 5. Okay, it could be interpreted that way. And then what happens? Clearly, Adam Kinziger hasn't thought about that, not for a moment. So you see the problem Wait, here. What? The question is not who's at fault. We can say that Vladimir Putin is at fault for what happened last night. We, we, sh we, Vladimir Putin is, is at fault. But then what? What do you mean, but then And what? that's the larger problem. Once conflict starts, especially when that conflict is televised, what is it's really hard to know what happens next. So anyone who thinks the invasion of Ukraine couldn't become a world war either lacks imagination. So he wants, so the take seems to be formulating into Russia should face no harm for this because they're scary.
Is he going to be mad at at the like sanctions and stuff? Is that what's going on? Hmm. Hmm. I wonder how. Do you think? No. This guy doesn't have any money that's going to be fucked up by the seizures in Russia, right? Hmm. Maybe. Numi, thanks for the 23 months. Nation or is lying to you. It certainly could become a world war. So that's the first goal, not making a terrible thing much, much worse. Here's the second goal. Keep the energy flowing. Cheap energy. We take it for granted, but it is the basis of... Mm -hmm. What I say... They're worried about the fucking gas pump, dude. They are worried. They are more worried about seeing three fifty a gallon than they are about fucking human lives, bro. Oh, we gotta cheap keep cheap fuel flowing. All we have: no energy, no civilization. Unfortunately, no energy. We do not rely on the eastern part of Ukraine for the fucking energy. We don't rely on Russia for energy. <laughs> There are so many other ways to do this. Yesterday, uh, uh, what was his face? What's the Matt Walsh tweeted um, that like, oh, oh, you know, thanks to the Biden administration for not stopping this, we're gonna have really expensive gas or whatever. Too bad we stopped drilling, so we don't have energy independence. It's like, Matt, what do you think? What do you think renewable energy resources domestically would turn into? That's energy independence, baby. That's part of the leftist like point about like green energy no one is saying never turn on a car again okay never burn an a, a, a droplet of gasoline again no they're saying our dependence upon it as the sole source of energy is bad and it leads to pollution and other in other problems not to mention geopolitical issues when it comes to the ob- obtaining of this fuel so that we can live again as as he said a civilized life it's why we invaded iraq it's 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 partly why uh, Russia is invading Ukraine. It's if you simply don't have the need for fossil fuels anymore as a nation, you can divorce yourself from from the tie, the economical and geopolitical ties that these countries we don't agree with. You you never have to do it again. Like imagine imagine all the problems we have with with Saudi Arabia from an optical perspective because of their human rights violations for years and years, but they have oil, so we have to stick around. We could simply wash our hands of it, wash our hands of China, wash our hands of Russia, and treat them as though they are their own countries that we don't have to have specific natural resource ties to. Now you can still establish trade for other stuff, but you should never have some sort of vital. Like, literally the blood of, like, American capitalism, like, what pumps through the veins of it is fucking fuel and energy, right? And if you don't have those things, it's bad. I agree with anyone who says that, including Tucker Carlson, yes, obviously. But at what cost? What do do you mean? I'm not willing to, like, why not just have some fucking renewable energy? It's not SJW bullshit to want to be energy independent and also make the earth healthier. By the way, since we live here, it's not pussy SJW shit. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. These people are the same people that bought, like, uh, incandescent light bulbs when Barack Obama was like, hey, these are better light bulbs. You remember those people? And they're like, no, I'm going to use my light bulbs. I don't like Barack Obama light bulbs. Like, but Jake, renewable energy would make us reliant on Mother Nature, and these people don't want to depend on women. Uh, I think it's more these people don't want to not be able to profit off of energy when you are able to make it yourself out of your home, right? If you have if you have solar panels on your roof and you have a community that is powered at large by like wind and, and other solar aspects, and you ve- and you have to rely very little on uh, uh, gasoline except to fuel your, fuel your vehicles and, and stuff because we're not going to phase out of fuel vehicles. Like your lawnmower isn't going to become electric overnight unless you have one already. But um, you know what I mean? We're still going to need these for generations, right? Gasoline will be around for generations, but not in the way that we need it for maybe shipping and stuff like that. Um, and, and to generate electricity so that you can have renewable energy is good. Even if it just mitigates the use of gasoline and, and fossil fuels and oils and stuff, like a natural gas... It just has to mitigate it. It doesn't have to replace it. These people will still make billions of dollars. Capitalists need to calm down. They don't need to make they don't need to make all the money right now. That is always what capitalists are about, man. 
I need to make all the money right this second. We need to maximize. Print, print, print. And it's like, bro, if we just chilled out, we would have plenty for everyone for the extent of Amer- of not just America, of, of world population, like the human race would be fine if they stopped hoarding stuff and worried that somebody else was going to scoop a little off their plate and onto theirs. These people are fucking insane, dude. Every day, every day, we wake up in a world where we could all just agree that everybody should have what they need. Every day we do, and we choose not to. Wild stuff. A huge percentage of Europe's energy now comes from Russia and Ukraine. The European Union relies on Russia for roughly 40% of its natural gas. In Germany, which is one of the biggest economies in the world, that percentage is over half. Most of its energy in the form of natural gas comes from Russia and Ukraine. So you don't hear that very often on television. This debate is framed exclusively in moral terms, and those are important. We shouldn't ignore them. But they're not the only terms we should consider. The fact is that Vladimir Putin has the power to send Europe, and for that matter, potentially the United States, into an economic depression. Putin has the power to turn off the lights. So where did Vladimir Putin get this power? Oh, Jesus. Well, there are a lot of reasons, but a big reason is the climate people gave him this power. Thanks to pressure from zealots like John Kerry, Europe has been shutting zealots down nuclear like power Kerry. plants for years. And that's... But that... But- you literally just mentioned Chernobyl moments ago. Like I'm, I I like nuclear. Frankly, I do. Right? I think it's I think in in reasonable hands it'd be good. But again, you have to have stability and shit. And like these regions don't have the stability. Like <laughs> Starker engaging in double speak. Uh, you you'd think so? By the way, are climate people generally against nuclear? Nuclear is like crazy clean. Does he think that Gre- Greta Greta was like the one that that like started the war? It's a very confusing strategy. If you're worried about climate, nuclear energy is not the problem. Nuclear energy is the solution. It's reliable. A lot of Europe is scared of nuclear. Well, yeah, they've had some problems with it. Basically produced, it emits no carbon. So if you were genuinely to be fair, though, like the n- all the nuclear stuff that happens has that like the bad stuff that happens has been. Uh, oversight and bureaucracy getting in the way of it. It's always been that. Always. If you only worried about temperature rises, global warming, you would embrace nuclear energy. Like, but our leaders, and not just ours... Gl- like, for uh, Chernobyl, it was specifically like like the, the Soviet Union, the USSR, didn't want to look weak on the world stage, and they wanted to try to cover this up. Um, and there was a whole bureaucratic system involved with it that, like, as people were trying to take it up to the top, they just kept denying them. And, and you, you, of course, of course it happened in, in fuck, like, have you guys, have you guys ever watched, uh, a really great political movie, Shin Godzilla. <laughs> Shin Godzilla is about the, uh, Fukushima disaster in Japan. Um, but from the perspective of a, of a kaiju movie, uh, it's really good. And it has a lot to say about the bureaucracy of like, all of this and like how profit and like like optics and like politics get in the way of just doing the right thing. Yeah. Better just rely on coal and oil, true. Um Yeah, go watch Shin Godzilla after. It's really great. Miss Smoke Check? No, we haven't smoke checked yet. Globally across the West have done the opposite. Why? Maybe their donors and families are invested in so-called renewable technologies. Who knows? Whatever the reason. Renew- so-called because renewable of- technologies. Hmm. Maybe they're invested in them. Maybe, maybe, look, I realize that, like, people like like Nancy Pelosi, probably John Kerry, probably lots of the Democrats invest in things early because they can, they can make money off of them, obviously. It's not like Tucker Carlson doesn't own stock in things that harm people, right? Definitely that happens. Um... And, and I don't think that I don't think that Congress people should be allowed to trade in this way at all. Um, I mean, I, I think a lot of corruption would stop if you stopped allowing anyone that holds office to trade on the stock market. Any of it, like get rid of it. You already like you're, you're pretty secure when you're at the federal level of the government. I think you're fine. Um, we don't need you to make money on stocks. But uh, nonetheless, I invest in things solely like i invest in weed and solar sometimes 
Um, specifically because I believe in these things as as positives for my country and positives for the world and positives for the human race. I do, in fact, invest. And lots of people invest out of, like, the hope that these things get traction and and start improving people's lives and improve the economics of everybody and the living situations of everybody. Like, people do this. It's not it's not new. We invest in Jake. Hey, do invest now. Your the stock has never been higher, okay? On corn. All right? Get your cobs. Get your cobs today. A a corn whale near you could provide you with the corn you need to feed your family for an entire month. We have we have we have great corn options. We have corn options for uh like 5 bucks, uh 10 bucks and and 25 bucks. Uh, I get uh, 50, 60, and 70% respectively from Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3s. I get 100% of all biddies. So stocks. Stocks are high. <laughs> Hodl. Hodl the corn. A series of very Hold specific no decisions you to to made over time. The West <laughs> is now dangerously dependent on Vladimir Putin for energy. Now, early- oh, yeah. No, I don't, need, I, don't th- I don't think anyone... Okay. My approach to energy has never been in all the eggs in one basket thing. 100% of all of nuclear for all power. We only have 50 to 70 years. You know, if we do 50% of our power for nuclear, we have, uh, by my math, 100 to 140 years of it. So that's my that's my take. I think I think maybe we just we just try to do all the energy. We do them all. So not one member of the energy group. Hear me out. Look, this may be a capitalist take. But I think it's actually good for a consumer in a capitalist country, hmm? Hear me out, capitalists, to have competition in regards to which energy source powers their home and helps them traverse this land we call America in our vehicles. Hmm. If if only I had more than more than one power company trying to sell me energy, or if I only had um, more than one option, if I could get. Um, maybe power my own home without having to be on the grid. Hmm, I don't know. Seems like maybe maybe some of these things aren't as uh, capitalistic as, as one would hope. Hmm? Hmm? Even under capitalism, they're not doing the right thing, dude. Leaders may act like this is not a big deal. They lo- they, 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 they just lobby so that they can maximize profit in the oil industry because that was the first one that really was was efficient enough to facilitate an industrial revolution and uh, here we are a big deal and we ought to make decisions based on sun socialist true and finally a topic no one ever brings up we must protect the u.s dollar america's power derives from its wealth wow rich countries get to do what they want fuck poor countries must obey their masters or they get invaded That is that is quite literally the most fascist thing I've heard him say. And he says a lot of fascist shit. Masters must obey or they get invaded. Is there a butt coming? Hmm, let's see. Joe Manchin 69. Thanks for following, buddy. Naps Mix, thanks for the 50 bitties again. Uh, when you actually look at the numbers, solar producing the same percentage of energy as fossil fuels... Uh, do now would create more job. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mask we just off. saw that happen. That is the unchanging rule. In this country, control of the U.S. dollar is the key to our what wealth. What the fuck? Our entire financial. He didn't life. say but. He just kept going. He's like and and also. Not only should poor countries bend the fucking knee to rich countries, but also. Debt-based economy rests on the unique privilege of issuing the world's reserve currency. If the U.S. dollar is ever replaced, we are in legitimate trouble. Our debt will come due. Our government will... So he knows our debt will come due if we don't have military supremacy over people. See, again, in the interest of American uh, hegemony, just just to avoid the comeuppance that the American... The America that he supports, right? The practices that he supports... He knows it's immoral, but we have big guns so they can't do anything. Worst improv ever. Will go bankrupt and millions of Americans will become poor immediately. Poor. He can't even say poor right. He's never been poor, so he says poor. 
So this is the main thing we ought to be worried He's so, about. It's so foreign to him, he can't even pronounce greater it. Greater risk now than ever before. Fooler. Sanctions are an emotionally Fooler. satisfying way to punish someone like Vladimir Putin, who clearly does deserve to be punished. No one's really against sanctions. But the question is, do they work? Do economic sanctions on a country that doesn't have nearly as much money of... Like, yeah, sanctions will work on Russia. Yes. Yes, they will. And we also have to we also have to do other stuff, I agree. But like sanctions will work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. American troops cannot start fighting Russian troops. That is how you escalate into a war. Yes, sanctions are the right one. What is his prescription for how to fix this besides poop face? Clearly, multiple sanctions did not prevent last night's invasion of Ukraine. Let but what the fuck? Okay, so you just said one moment ago, Tucker that money and protecting the American dollar is how you ensure that we can maintain some kind of power. And when, the, when your dollar fades, when the wealth of your country fades, so too does your security, which to some degree is true, right? Certainly, Russia's economy that just fell off a cliff, the f fucking Moscow shut down trading when they dropped a 46% of their entire stock market dropping, they lost 46% of their stock market, chat. 46% of it. That's a lot of percentages. That's an incredible amount. Hardly, hardly more could be could be uh, uh, sustained. And yes, if you economically sanction Russia against, like, hey, by the way, uh, you can't sell fucking the, the one natural resource you have that everybody wants. <laughs> yeah, that'll hurt. And, and, and then freezing the bank accounts of the oligarchs that run Russia. Huge. Huge. Such a good thing. Such a good thing. Let's start there. At the same time... If the sanctions don't work, why did Fox lose their shit when Obama lifted sanctions for, uh, for Iran following treaty rules? True. And sanctions give Russia and many other countries across the world true, a strong true. incentive to dump the U.S. dollar, which is the means by dump which we enforce dollar. sanctions. So last summer, for example, in a story that most people didn't pay enough attention to, Russia, in response to sanctions, completely removed the U.S. dollar, its assets, from its sovereign wealth fund, its national wealth fund. Oh, no. The Chinese noticed. They understand exactly how this works. And mm -hmm. in their effort to displace the United States, mm -hmm. they are strongly in favor of it. China is trying to become the first major country in the world whose central bank issues sovereign digital currency. If that works, and many efforts like it, it would be a huge loss for the United States, an irreplaceable loss that would change this country forever, much more than an invasion of Ukraine. So we should be watching that, a tax on the primacy of the U.S. dollar globally, every bit as intently Jesus. as we watch the coverage currently on television what? of the hot war. I, I, actually, I actually cannot think of a more capitalistic take then we should worry about the American dollar's value on the world market as much as the lives being lost in Ukraine. What a disgusting piece of shit. If at the end of this conflict, whenever that is, countries around the world have come to see the Chinese yuan as a stronger, more stable currency than the U.S. dollar, then this country will have lost more than we understand. Somebody needs to be paying attention to this. Let's fervently hope that somebody is. We have to be worrying about... How did they make this about China and Russia and the American dollar? The Uans. Get your Uans, chat.